So if you are not a fan of cooking, you are going to love this meal prep. This is the simplest meal prep ever. You don't have to be very good at cooking and it will produce 12 meals that will have a great balance of protein, carbohydrates, and vegetables. So let me go through the ingredients and show you how we do it. So first thing you're gonna need is a couple of different pots. So this is all done on a stove. So you have a big pot here. You're gonna be boiling potatoes in there. Uh, you have a small pot here. You're gonna be putting your ground turkey and beef in there. And then I use the stand mix because I'm making mashed potatoes, you're going to um, mix it in there. Now, if you want to, you can do roasted potatoes if that's a little bit easier for you, but I prefer mashed, they just heat up a little bit better. So the other thing you're gonna need is a steamer to steam the vegetables and you'll need some sort of storage containers. So the ingredients, very simple ingredients, all of them you can find at Costco, six pounds of ground turkey. So this is 12 meals that we're gonna be doing. This is made for me, I'm about 210, 220 pounds. So 12 meals, you're gonna need six pounds of ground turkey. I also like to put in two pounds of ground beef, just makes it a little bit tastier. If you don't like ground beef, you can skip that part. You're gonna need a bag of potatoes. So I have a bag and about a half a bag over here. So that's what we're doing, the mashed potatoes. You can do sweet potatoes in here as well if you like. Take whatever vegetables are kind of in season. Right now we have kale and broccoli. And all I'm gonna do here is cut these up and steam them. It'll make about four ounces of vegetables, maybe a little bit more, six ounces of vegetables per meal. Last thing you're gonna need is a whole bunch of spices. So basically what I'm doing is putting all these spices together and mixing them in with the meat. You can replace all of this with taco seasoning if you prefer, but this is basically a taco recipe that I've just adapted to use for my meal prep. In the end, you will have 12 meals that have seven ounces of meat, that have seven ounces of potatoes, and about four to six ounces of vegetables. Start to finish, this should only take you about an hour. Now the first time it'll take you a little longer, but it should only take you about an hour, and most of the time is spent waiting for the potatoes to boil. I've got the water started already, I'm just gonna wash the potatoes and drop them in. Just gonna go ahead and drop them in. I'm gonna try not to spill stuff all over. Yeah, that's good. And we're just gonna bring that to a boil. This is you. This is gonna take about 25, 30 minutes or so to boil. And while we're doing that, we're just gonna prep everything else. I just drop all of it in there. And looking through this, this is actually one and a half. One and a half pounds, so I said it was, yeah, it's about six pounds. 1.67 pounds times four. That's uh, 6.4 pounds. And then we've got one pound of ground beef. So this is 7% fat, this is 15% fat. Sometimes I'll use lighter, lower fat beef, but um, I like this stuff. It's actually pretty low fat. This is from Piedmontese. I actually order this online about once or twice a year. And we use it for barbecue and burgers, but I haven't done those for a long time. So now I'm just using it for my meal prep. These make the juiciest burgers. Piedmontese cows are like super jacked that were bred in Italy somewhere. And without any hormones, they have a lot of muscle, which means that they make really good ground beef. All right, so we dropped all that stuff in there and then we're gonna put our spices together and combine and put them in as well. So we're gonna put together the seasoning for the meat. Now, just a reminder, if you don't have all these spices or you don't wanna do it this way, you can use just Lowry's taco seasoning. It will still taste good, but I got used to doing this as just a recipe for taco seasoning. So I use a tablespoon and a teaspoon. If you don't have one of those, fun fact, you could use one of these. They're not exact, but for a recipe like this, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take three tablespoons of cumin, three tablespoons of salt, and two tablespoons of pepper. My kids don't like it to be too spicy, so I don't do that. And then I will do one teaspoon each of paprika, garlic powder, red chili, onion powder, and oregano. Again, these don't have to be exact. Like if you love garlic, then put two of them in there. You're making what is essentially eight pounds of ground meat. Whatever you put in there, it's not gonna overpower it. Then you are just going to take a spoon 
and just mix it all up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you kind of cook it, it will start to dissolve a little bit. This is actually the secret to this that makes it delicious. This is what I eat twice a day, almost every single day. It never gets old because you have lots of different spices on there and it keeps you entertained. So once that is all done, I'm turning on the meat, gonna warm it up. I generally won't pour the spices in until the meat's already cooked a little bit. Once the water starts coming out a little bit, then I'll put the spices in so it can kind of soak through the meat. So I'm gonna put a cover on that, let it cook, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and mash it down so that the ground, ground beef kind of gets mixed in. Started the meat and I kind of pressing it. You can see the water starting to come out a little bit here. And this is, once I kind of break this up a little bit, I just get this little, it's like a $5 thing I got on Amazon to break up the meat. Could use a wooden spoon as well. But once this breaks up a little bit, then you can start to put the seasoning in there. You can see it's quite a bit. I mean, we're talking eight and a half pounds of meat here. It takes a lot of seasoning to make this work. And in fact, I might even add a little bit more depending on how it tastes after it cooks. I had this on high to start with. I think I'm gonna turn it down to maybe seven or so, just because it's gonna be sitting here for a while as the potatoes are boiling. The turkey that I put in here is pretty low fat and it's a little harder to break up, especially if it's frozen. So this is part of the reason why I put the ground beef in there is it has a little higher fat content, which means that it will cook a little bit better, a little bit faster together. So our potatoes are boiling. Yep, we're gonna let them go for a while. And we're gonna cut up the vegetables and just drop them in the steamer. So with the broccoli, if the stems are this short, I usually cook the stems as well. It's pretty much all the same for me. So I'll just throw it in there. I didn't show that uh, we also wash the broccoli, which to be honest, I don't always wash it. My wife does. I don't mind the dirt and the bugs, but she doesn't like it. So if you don't have time, you don't have to bother to wash it. So just cutting that up, throwing it in there in the bottom of the steamer. This, this thing's kind of handy because it has a bottom in here, I can drop the broccoli in, and the top in here, I can drop the kale in, and so I can steam them both at once. But if you just have one, or if you just have one of those ones that drop into the pot, you can use that and just steam them separately. Vegetables don't take very long to steam, not like the potatoes. So one thing that I've learned doing this over the years is that you actually wanna undercook the vegetables a little bit. So they need to be a little bit hard, a little bit green, and you don't wanna overcut them either, because if they're too small, they will overcook. And what ends up happening with the broccoli is it gets kind of mushy and gray and especially when you reheat it it's kind of gross so if you undercook it then when you reheat it because most of these meals are going to be reheated in the microwave it's still nice and crispy and it tastes pretty good i don't put anything onto these i just steam them because all the spices are in the meat and in the end we mix everything together i like to chop this um, into smaller bite-sized pieces i don't like these giant pieces of kale in my lunch. I always take all the stems off. You can keep them if you want. So for this, I'm just gonna chop it all together. Now be careful with this. If you're a little bit wild with the knife. Okay, so that's all chopped up. I'm just gonna drop it all in there and I just kind of stuff it in. We got a little extra kale today. I'm not sure why we have so much, but I'm just gonna put it all in and steam it down. All right and I drop this on top. And when it's ready, I just put the top on and we steam all those vegetables together. Let's check in on our potatoes and our meat. So first the meat looks like we're actually pretty close to done here. Yeah, it's a nice brown color. I put the rest of the seasoning in there and I defrosted this meat completely. So it's cooking a little bit faster than I'm used to. Normally I put it in half frozen and it takes a little longer to cook. So I think this is good. We're just gonna turn that down to like two, let some of that water boil off. Now with the potatoes, a little steamy. All right, so what we're looking for is I put a fork in and see if it kind of slides through. And if it does pretty good slide through, then it's nice and soft. That means that it will be easy to mix it up when I put it in there. So I think these potatoes are done. And so I'm gonna take this big pot, pour it into a colander. This is very hot. That's good, some of them are split, that's good. Now with sweet potatoes, they tend to be a little bit softer. You don't wanna over sort of boil those. With the regular potatoes, they tend to be a little harder. You're gonna to have to cook them a little longer. 
If you've never made mashed potatoes before, it takes a little bit of tweaking to get used to it. But again, you can just do roasted potatoes, just throw them in the oven, that's pretty simple as well. I'm gonna drop these into the mixer. We can toss the rest of the potatoes in when we go. If you don't have a stand mixer, then you can just use a whisk. It's just a pain to do it that way. Or you could even replace this with rice if that's on the menu for you. So I don't go too overboard with the butter. Um, I like to put it in just to get the consistency of the mashed potatoes. So I'll put some butter in, maybe some heavy cream or milk, depending on what it is. Right, start slow, because the potatoes want to jump out at the beginning. I just leave the skins on because if you're using a mixer at the end, you can pull a lot of the skins off. I like it better with skins on it. So this is gonna take a little while. While we're doing that, we're gonna fill this pot with water. And just a little bit of water this time because we're gonna steam our vegetables and everything should be done around the same time. Don't have to worry too much about the water being clean or anything because it's not actually gonna touch the vegetables. So a little potato, potato water is not gonna kill you. All right, I'm gonna turn that on high. The kale usually cooks faster than the broccoli, so this thing should <laughs> come down as it, uh, as it starts to cook. So that's on high, that's on two, that thing is going. We'll be done in about 10, 15 minutes. So our potatoes are just about done here. They're a little thicker than I would have liked, so I had to add a little bit of milk in there to thin them up a little. And what I usually do is just take out the thing and then just knock off whatever skins are in there or just put it aside. And then what I will do is take the potatoes and I will start by loading the potatoes into my dish. So I will go for about seven ounces of potatoes and I will just put the food scale on and just do seven ounces at a time, just loading all of these things up. About seven ounces of potato yeah and I will just load up the whole thing load up each one of those six and three quarters doesn't have to be exact six and seven eighths close enough and then as soon as I'm done with that I will load it up with seven ounces of the ground beef as well so by weighing and measuring this stuff when I cook it then I never have to do it during the week so if I'm entering in my food it's just really straightforward. I just put in that I had the standard lunch and the standard dinner, which means that I'll have the seven ounces of each of those things. So it looks like our veggies are done. We got the kale on top here. It's nice and green. It's not too soggy or anything. Let's see how the broccoli turned out. Yeah, the broccoli is also nice and green and a little bit crunchy, which is exactly what you want. You do not want to overcook the veggies. It makes it gross when you're eating these things on Thursday or Friday after you're done doing this. So veggies are all done. We'll take those out and we'll put about four ounces of those into the container as well. All right, let's load up the meat. Go seven ounces. There you go, seven on the dot. So a little bit of kale. Do about two, two ounces of kale. There we go. And maybe not quite that much. Five ounces. There we go. Cool. So that would be the whole meal. You're gonna have about two ounces of kale, about three ounces of broccoli, seven ounces of mashed potato, seven ounces of ground turkey mixed with ground beef. And what you do is when you eat this, you just mix it all up and it tastes delicious. So you could add hot sauce to this, sometimes sour cream, but it usually tastes good just on its own. And then you have that and you just cover it up and you are good to go. Thank you.
this meal prep is gonna get you 12 to 15 meals and it's gonna be 49 grams of protein, 46 grams of carbs, 16 grams of fat, and 11 grams of fiber. I usually eat this twice a day, whether I am looking to gain muscle or lose fat because it's just a great balanced meal and I always really enjoy it. You can adjust some of it. Sometimes I use sweet potatoes. Sometimes I'll replace kale with like chard or I'll replace the broccoli with cauliflower. You can try out different things to keep it interesting and keep it fresh. But I think this is a great baseline for just about anybody who is training on a regular basis, looking to gain muscle, looking to lose fat. I'll put a full list of all the ingredients and the macros, as well as all the equipment I use down below so that you can click on it and buy all the stuff that you need to buy. I would say this is probably gonna cost you about 50 to $100 per week, depending on where you go and how fancy the ingredients you use, but it is absolutely worth it and it doesn't take you that much time. So this is the first time we've done a full food prep video. So do me a favor, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and comment below. What did you take away from it? Would you like to see us do more of these? Do you wanna see what the other coaches are eating? Just write it down below. And don't forget to check out some of the other videos on our channel, including the podcast, which we release every week.